You're listening to the awesomers.com episode number 13. And to find show notes and some of the details and links and so forth that we may discuss today, you can go to awesomers.com backslash 13. That's awesomers.com slash 13. So this is an Awesomers uh, Book of the Week uh, discussion. And today we are going to talk about one of my very favorite books. And uh, I'm certainly glad to share this book with you. Uh, it's called The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. Now, this is a, an actually an older book. I think it was written in the late 80s, maybe the most recent publication, late 90s. But it's something that I've been aware of because we have used this type of book as a standard part of our management nomenclature for, um, I don't know, 15 or 20 years maybe. I don't, I don't really know how long, but a long time. And as always with, with these books, I like to give a little bit of context, right? So one of the things that is important to me about this book is that by defining some similar vocabulary within the organization, and you'll find often that the books that we introduce are about sharing vocabulary with your peers, with your associates, uh, anybody that's on your team. And this is one of the most key vocabulary uh, types that we use, which is called the uh, the monkey, right? Who's got the monkey? And ultimately, this is about assigning and delegating you know, both tasks or projects to your people. And it's it's a book, to be honest with you, the book's very thin. It's very uh, easy to read. You can probably read it in an hour or two, depending on how fast you read. But the lessons in there should be very, very lasting lessons. They really are some critical, critical lessons that we have found to be not just important in our business, but really easy to digest and understand. There's a lot of humor in the book, which is very nice. And it's written by uh, Kenneth Blanchard and William Onikin, uh Jr. and Hal Burroughs. Uh, I think Will has uh, passed away now, but Kenneth Blanchard uh, is also a very uh, prolific author, has written things like the book Gung Ho and how to turn you know any people into an organization into the Gung Ho uh, kind of attitude, uh, raving fans, and is uh, part of the, the One Minute Manager um, general philosophy, and this is part of that series, The One Minute Manager. So in this case, it's the one manager. One minute manager meets the monkey, and we're not going to spend too much time on it today because I want you to read the book instead of listen to me talk. But I'm going to just share some highlights with you. And this particular book really, really important. And I've actually had people more than one time come and tell me this book totally changed my life. It changed my management structure. And of course, I don't take any credit. Credit goes to the authors who told a very compelling story. And we indeed find it to be something that is. And it's just so instructive to be able to break things down to the very simplest equation. And we'll talk more about that uh, here in, the, in a minute. So one of my favorite quotes is, <laughs> things not worth doing are not worth doing well. And that, that really is a, uh, another way of saying something that I, I generally like to focus on, which is this concept that we all focus on making these to-do lists. And these to-do lists can be extraordinarily detailed. They can be, you know, uh, full of all kinds of rich opportunities and challenges and and deliverables. But more often than not, they're too long, and they're they're largely undoable, and they often can add frustration and headaches to you. So having a do-not-do list, or at least a do-later list that is bigger than your to-do list, is a pretty important thing in my book. And this, this quotation really does sum up this, this idea that, you know, if, you're, if it's not worth doing, don't do it well, right? And what a concept that is to just free yourself and go, you know what? This is not going to move the objectives, whatever those objectives for you are. It could be revenue, it could be margin, it could be team building, organization structure, finance, whatever it is. If those things are not going to really move the ball in a meaningful way, then why bother doing them at all? And the, the subset of that is, you know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it, but it still needs to be done. And this is often where the, the manager meets the monkey is a really important concept. Because too often, at least in my experience, and I think this is not just my companies, but, but many, many companies, and I'm talking about dozens, if not hundreds of companies, often the, the founder, the owner, CEO, however you want to think of yourself, finds themselves as the bottleneck. And they're the bottleneck because they kind of know what they want in their head. They don't really document it. They're really good at being tacticians, which we talked about in our last book of the week, The E-Myth Revisited. 
And because we're excellent tacticians, we also feel like we're making progress when we're doing that kind of work. We tend to take on more than we should. And uh, one of the one of the quotes in the book is that the best way to develop responsibility in people, wait for it, it's to give them responsibility, right? Now, what a concept, right? We're always like, all right, how do you get somebody to be responsible? Well, why not empower them with the resources and tools they need to get the job done and then hold them responsible? Let them be responsible. And this is, this is a big a culture lesson. You know, a lot of times in organizations, people say, well, I want somebody who's really accountable. And I'll, I'll tell you the truth. There are, you know, most employees also want to be accountable. And, and employees will use the word responsible. They want responsibilities. They want to deliver. They really do want to do things that are meaningful and important to the enterprise. On the management side, we tend to use the words accountable, which implies I'm going to get you if you don't do it right. But I want everybody to think of both of those sides evenly, right? We should hold somebody accountable when they kick butt and when they broke new records. Let's hold them accountable, right? They were responsible for that achievement, but let's, let's sing about how accountable they are and how awesome they did. That's part of making a culture where you know you are not just – punitive in nature, right? It's like we ignore the good stuff and we beat you down for the bad stuff. Uh, one of my favorite uh, old cartoons or uh, little uh, comics that I saw one time, it says, the beatings will continue until morale improves. And, uh, you know, obviously it's, a, it's quite a joke because uh, no organization can, can benefit from that in the long run. So that's, you know, that, that's a really important concept to think about. You know, who's doing the work? Why are they doing it? Does it need to be done at all? And, and most importantly, to make sure, in my case, I like to avoid what I call boomerang delegations. Now, this is one of my axioms I'll share with you in another episode. But I say, beware the boomerang delegation. And a boomerang delegation is when you, you kind of throw the, uh, the task or the monkey, in this case, out there. And you maybe even assign it to an individual. And that individual thought about it and said, you know what, uh, Instead of me doing it, I know the right person to do it. Maybe they're a manager and can assign it to people as a normal course of doing business. Fine. Uh, then they assign it to somebody, and then that person says, you know what? I know the perfect resource to put into place, and they bring in another resource. But ultimately, whoever it is, wherever it in the chain, the person who ends up actually doing the task calls the first person who assigned the task and goes, hey, do you have any idea how to do this? I've been assigned this. And boom, the boomerang hits you right in the face. And now I have like a, a Jason from Friday the 13th face mask and a hockey helmet that I wear just to avoid boomerang delegations. But they, they wouldn't come back on me if I would pay closer attention to that one-minute manager meets the monkey lessons. And so I'll read this actually uh, usually once or twice, uh, well, once a year, maybe once every other year. Uh, just to refresh my memory, it's always a very easy read. As I said, probably for me it's a, a about an hour, maybe just a little more, and, and you're just done. And it's really a simple concept. So we're going to dive into a couple other key takeaways for this book. And uh, we'll be right back after this. Okay, awesomers, we're back again. And we're talking about this uh, great book, The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. And it's definitely a seminal work if you manage people and it doesn't matter if they're people who are inside your organization reporting to you or um, you know, external people that are freelance-type folks, uh, out, Upwork or you know, any of the, the different uh, variations of freelancing these days. Uh, the, the, the point is that you, know, you want to be able to manage these people and, and be able to get positive results and so that you, as the manager, don't have to do everything. And so one of the, the fun little takeaways, and there's a lot of humor in this book to begin with. This is a fun one. But it says, if you always agree with your boss, one of you is not necessary. And I, I just love that because, uh, you know, the point is, you know, having an organization, you should get multiple opinions. Now, the, there's a general philosophy that, you know, once both, assuming that you and your uh, employee or maybe you're the employee, you and your boss don't necessarily agree on something, you talk it out and then the boss makes the call. Right, so it's disagree and commit. That's a, a common thing that the Amazon.com organization uses, where they have the discussions, they have you know all of the the back and forth about who's right and who's wrong, and that's necessary in an organization, by the way. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, somebody makes the call. Somebody with the authority makes a call, 
And then even if you disagreed, you disagree, but you commit to whatever the course of action is. And again, this is a very important cultural element. The disagree and commit mindset says, you know what? I had a different idea, but after all was said and done, the, the decision was made to proceed on this, and I'm going all in on it. I'm going to do my very best. I'm not going to you know, be one of those guys or gals who tries to you know, uh, create a problem for the, you know, whoever made the decision. Any of that kind of sabotage is something that can absolutely destroy a culture. And if any of you see it in your organizations, no matter what level, you should call it out and extinguish it in the fastest possible way. Always get rid of that as fast as you possibly can. Another quote that I that really uh, is something that always stands out to me uh, within the book. It's on uh, somewhere in the book. I think around page fifty. I don't recall the exact page, but experience is not what happens to you; it's what you do with what happens to you. Right. So that's what experience is. And we talk about this on Awesomers all the time in origin stories. You know, experience is, is not the act itself. It's what you do with it. That's what gets you the, you know, the lessons learned and the forward momentum, assuming you're doing the right things. So when we face, you know, adversity or challenges, it's how we deal with those that, de- you know, defines what will we'll be. Boy, I almost sound like a Batman quote. It's not what I do. It's uh, something else that defines me. Anyway, I messed that uh, Batman quote up. But the point is, you have action to take when you deal with, you know, adversity. And within this book, it talks about that. And they, the book is actually structured as, as kind of a fun little story where you can see an example of somebody putting, uh, you know, this the one-minute manager meets the monkey thought process into place. So I want to just talk about these four monkey rules uh, a little bit in more detail because I think this is one of the biggest parts of understanding what a monkey is and how to deal with it. So first of all, the rule number one is to describe the monkey. So when you're thinking about a project or a task, you have to figure out how to describe that. And the, the subset rule of that is the dialogue ends only when you've identified the next moves. So just because you're having a t- – I've had meetings like this. I wonder if you have. You go into the meeting and somebody proclaims, hey, this is a, a big problem. We've got you know shipping delays or whatever the case is. And everybody around the table, yeah, boy, those shipping delays. We've got to do something about that. And you know, the next department says, yeah, boy, you know, who wants a shipping delay? Let's get rid of those. And you know, get eight or nine people reinforcing that you know, they don't want shipping delays. Very few people go, yes, I want shipping delays. And, but at the end of the meeting, everybody walks out, and nobody's, nobody does anything about it because nobody has the monkey. So once you've identified what it is, we have shipping delays, comma, let's fix them. Uh, that's describing the monkey. Next, you must assign the monkey so that when people walk out of that room, you didn't just you know flap your gums for the last 60 minutes. You actually have somebody who's got the monkey. And a subset of assign the monkey, that's rule number two, assign the monkey, is that all monkeys should be assigned to the capable and proper team. Now, what this means is they should be assigned to the lowest level within the organization that can care for the welfare of the monkey, right, to carry on that analogy. So, to, you know, if, if fix the shipping is the, the monkey – and you need to assign it. Should the CEO take that monkey if there's somebody capable in the operations department? And within the operations department, maybe there's a, an operations manager or director or even an officer. Maybe they have somebody within their department that should actually get that monkey. So the, the key to monkey management is assigning that monkey to the lowest level in the organizational structure that is both capable and has the tools to get the job done. Next, we... When we assign a monkey, I think there's a really key part of it. Uh, rule number three is we insure the monkey. Now, this doesn't mean we actually go and uh, buy insurance or anything like that for our little monkey friends. Um, this means we, we decide how we're going to um, consider the follow-up techniques for this monkey. So when you assign a monkey, you can give it with two types of insurance. One is the recommend and then act and the other is act, then advise. So in the recommend, then act, you may say, well, this is, as a manager, this is a very important thing. We want to ship the fi- uh, fix the shipping uh, issue that we have. But because it's so complex and because it's so costly and has the potential to even get worse, I want whoever's assigned this monkey to recommend the solution. We'll talk about it. 
then we act. Okay, so that's that's a for a big strategic type of issue that really needs to have some executive buy-in, if you will. Now, there's other kinds of monkeys. Maybe it's like, hey, uh, we need to get that uh, weekly newsletter out to our customers, and you know, uh, let, we're going to sign that to somebody in marketing. You can use the uh, method of act then advise, right? So, hey, who's got the monkey? Hey, we're going to give it to this marketing associate, and she's going to uh, send out this email. And she's, in fact, going to assign herself every Monday to send out those emails. And in this context, we can say we're going to act, then advise, right? So it's like, hey, go forward, send out that newsletter, and just advise us how's it, how's it going. Now, if we see mistakes later as the managers, we're still responsible for those. But they should be capable. And this is, again, if you want them to be responsible, give them responsibilities kind of mindset. And finally, rule number four is to check on the monkey, Hey, that little buddy needs love too. And we need to make sure that we're checking up with whoever's assigned these monkeys until they're either completed and uh, you know done or if it's an ongoing monkey that there's standard check-ins. And uh, as the subset of this rule is proper checkups mean healthier monkeys, right? And this is the difference between delegation and abdication uh, as always. We can say, just go handle this and don't talk to me about it. That's abdication and a terrible management style. Delegation is you've got the monkey. We understand what it is and uh, report to me in two weeks on our regular our regular one-on-one check-in. That ensures responsibility is matched with accountability. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back after this. Okay, guys, so we're, we're wrapping up uh, here. I'm talking about the one-minute manager meets the monkey. Uh, I do want to talk again briefly about those rules. First, you've got to describe the, the, uh, you know, what the next moves are. Then you've got to decide who's got the monkey, right? And it, when I go into a meeting now, you know, I've been in meetings with you know, 10, 15, uh, 20 of you know, the team members. And by the way, I never walk out with a monkey. You know, my monkey is to follow up on other people's monkeys, if anything. And... Uh, but you shouldn't have any major talk, topic that leaves a meeting, whether it's online or in person, where people don't get assigned the monkey. They own that monkey. And then, of course, you got to talk about the insurance uh, to make sure that you have managed your risk. Is it a recommend and then act or an act and then uh, advise? Uh, that's the insurance policy based on how strategically important it is. And finally, you're going to do the monkey feeding and checkup, right? That's, that's your check-ins to decide, hey, is, this, is everything going well with this monkey? And make sure it doesn't come back and thro- start throwing boomerangs at you, uh, as they have in my case from time to time. So I, I really do believe this uh, book can help you. Again, it's a very quick read. Really, really an important uh, work for, for people who manage people. And I think you'll find that it is both enjoyable uh, a fast read, but most importantly, it's highly, highly impactful. So I definitely want to make sure that people understand this and get out there and give it a, a read as quick as you can. Uh, this, again, it was podcast number 13 from the awesomers.com podcast. And you can go to awesomers.com slash 13 to find all the show notes and all the particulars about this particular episode. Ooh, I said particular twice. So you'll be able to find the details, any show notes, and even the link to, to buy the book somewhere, I'm sure. And our objective with these books of the week is to share with you some of the things that we think are important, some of the things that uh, we have found progress and tangible results with. That's why we're doing these, and we sure hope that you uh, enjoy it. And don't hesitate to give us a little feedback. Thank you very much, everybody. <music>